Good morning, this is Don Berryhill from Okefenokee Swamp Park. Uh, we're continuing our program with the introduction to the, to the anatomy of the swamp, the uh, structure of the swamp. It is not all a soft, boggy mass. It is, it's composed of several different kind of communities. There are forests, prairies, scrubs, and lakes. Those are the major kinds of communities. That's four. The fifth one would be the, the, the blue areas around the edge, which are private property, which are, they're not included in the, in the wildlife refuge. For instance, the first entrance into the swamp is the Okefenokee Swamp Park up here on the north end. And it's the blue area right here. This is the swamp park, it's opened here in 1946 and uh, has, has morphed and changed continuously throughout its existence by adding facilities, services, uh, and, and, re, and re, re changing the roads to coming in and they changed the boardwalks uh, and the tower. The original tower at the swamp park was a wooden tower built way back there in the 40s, and it gradually aged and become unsafe. So it was replaced about 1955, 54, 55. And uh, it, now it's a steel tower. It's about 93 feet high, and you can see for miles and miles over the swamp. It's a really a fantastic view. And there are openings in the top of the tower so you can see from the northeast, south, and west and get good, clear pictures. Uh, the, the next entrance is down to the, to the east. You go down US 1, turn into the small, there's a large sign out there, Kingfisher Landing. It's about, about a mile in there to Kingfisher Landing. It originally was an industrial site. It's where they used to mine the peat out of the swamp. So when they mined out the peat, they took out thousands and thousands of yards of peat to process and sell and use for multiple purposes. Uh, so consequently, the first few, few miles of trails up in here, right in here, are very wide and deep. Uh, at, at least they were 40 years ago, nature's system called succession has slowly but surely narrowed it and, and made it more shallow. But it's still navigable for canoes, kayaks, and even motorboats for a short distance. Uh, the next entrance is further south. It's called the National Wildlife Refuge. It has several common names, Swanee Canal, uh, or, and also it's also called Camp Cornelia, uh, named after the daughter of the man who, who dug the canal. Uh, by the way, this is, this is the origin of the Swanee Canal, and this is it right here. It's about 11 miles long. Um, there are uh, numerous side trails that go to other sites in the swamp. Uh, and we'll mention those later. Um, uh, it also has been remodeled recently. They've, they've, they've shut down the old buildings, constructed new ones. Now there's an educational facility. There are uh, also modern technology with displays in, this, in, the, in the educational area displays of birds and fish and gators and snakes. Uh, the last entrance is on the west side of the swamp, over on this side, and it's right here. It's Camp Stephen Foster. Camp Stephen Foster on the west entrance to the National Wildlife Refuge. Camp Stephen Foster is a state park not managed, I mean, it's cooperatively managed with the state and the federal agencies, and it's been very successful, probably one of the more popular sites. And it has access 
to Billy's Lake. And Billy's Lake is about 60 acres in size, so that's a couple of miles long. And it's a good, clear, open ride. As a matter of fact, you can see that right here. This is Billy's Lake. Uh, and in the background there, we see a, a couple of guys in a canoe, probably fishing, which was a, and still is, a good fishing site. Uh, notice the large cypress trees on the side here, always decorated with nature's lace. It's called Spanish moss. <laughs> uh, and Spanish moss has many attributes of its own. We could, we could spend a few minutes with that sometime. Um, the, the lake is about three to eight feet deep, depending on where you measure, because it's not all an even level plain down there. Uh, around, up, to, up around the edges, of course, it's, uh, it's very shallow. Um, there are other trails that lead into this one. And there's, let, me, let me share this one with you. Uh, uh, right here, Big Water, this red trail coming down through here leads right into Billy's Lake. And that's Billy's Lake right there. It's about a couple of miles long, four or five miles long. And it's, uh, it's an easy travel uh, all the way up to Billy's Island. This is, this is Billy's Island right here. Billy's Island here appears as a forked, forked structure, like so, down here on the southern end. The northern end has an elevation of 122 feet. That is the highest level, last place in the swamp. Uh, Billy's Island had an Indian culture here. They, there were Seminoles who dug and, and, and uh, constructed uh, mounds burial mounds, two of which are still there. Uh, the f neither have been dug professionally. Some, some uh, ra rascals have uh, messed with it uh, destructively. They should not have done that. But uh, it, it's protected now. Everything inside the National Wildlife Refuge is protected so that no collecting no damage, no killing, no picking, no saving. Nothing can be taken out of the swamp. It is a national wildlife refuge, and it means just that. A refuge is a place of safety. Uh, there are special days that they allow hunting. They allow hunting for wild boar any time of the year. Just take all you want. <laughs> they are a, a, a pest. They, they eat anything and everything on the ground. Uh, they also have deer hunts. These are scheduled and by lottery. You pick a number and sign up and if your number is picked you can go on a hunt in specified places. Right up just uh, uh, 200 yards from here up the road there's an entrance to one of the hunting sites here on the north end. Uh, Let's see. There are numerous trails in the swamp. These are, these are the trails. The, the blue, the green, the red, the orange, the purple, the yellow. These are the different canoe trails in the swamp. Uh, one of the most colorful and one of the most exciting trails is the one where you go in up here at Kingfisher and go across the north end of the swamp, go across the north end, and you pass through a little lake right here called Mall Hammock, Mall Hammock. Uh, it's a small lake, but it's good fishing, and it's accessible by motor. Um, uh, and and it's, it's also an overnight, if you decide to spend the night there, and then the next day you could continue east and go to the trail that comes from the north and goes south. This is the red trail that goes south down to Big Water. This is, this is a sapling prairie out here. This is a big prairie. A prairie is an area with very few trees, but lots of shrubs, 
bushes, uh, and, uh, and, and, and aquatic vegetation. Um, let's see. Then, then you take this trail to, down to Minnie's Lake, Minnie's Shelter, right there, and it's not an overnight. It is a stop and rest, rest site. By the way, there are restrooms at all of these campsites. The restrooms at, and most of the stopovers. Uh, Craven's Hammock is down at the end of Billy's Lake. Uh, and it is very, very skeetery. <laughs> Lots of mosquitoes and, and ticks on there. Visiting on Billy's Island, as you walk down through it here, and on the south end, you see that it has scattered ponds. It begins to get shallower and more and more shallow, and there are scattered ponds in the south end of Billy's Island, so the vegetation changes down there with surface water. Um, one, one, one morning, five friends and I left Waycross and drove around, drove around here and up to uh, uh, Stephen Foster and got in Stephen Foster uh, in the lake there, Billy's Lake, and got up here to, to Billy's Island and walked the entire length of the island, which is about four miles. And then we crossed through the swamp right here over to Honey Island. Uh, and water was about waist deep. Uh, everybody was okay. We didn't, we didn't <laughs> stimulate any gators. Uh, they're usually afraid of people. They usually go away. <clears throat> uh, spent the day on Honey Island searching, <clears throat> and we found cabins, and we found uh, some old artifacts there. Um, it's an interesting place. It, was also, it used to be a place where they would hunt, hunt deer. The early settlers would hunt deer on Honey Island, and they, uh, they also... Uh, would collect ashes on Honey Island. Anytime there was a fire because there was green and, and white ash trees on that island. And that's where they'd go to collect ashes to make their soap because it makes a finer, they, they felt like it made a finer soap for the ash. Um, <clears throat> all of this in here all of this in here is covered with vegetation. There's hardly a square centimeter that doesn't have something growing on it, either on the bottom, which most of us never see, which I would love to see an exhibit that, that demonstrates that, that vegetation and that community. Then there's a community of organisms at the surface and another community that grows vertical. So there's life everywhere. Over a thousand different living things make their home here. 